And we're back. Game four tomorrow night in Smashville. Predators and Ducks, 7 o'clock, puck drop. Who will sing the national anthem? Who will be the towel waver? What happens on the ice? So many questions to get excited about before games at Bridgestone Arena throughout the playoffs. Our phone lines are still open, 737-7767. But I want to get to the head coach. Because Peter Laviolette, after games, I think gives you pretty decent insights. He's a man sometimes who can be very short. And trying to glean much information out of him after losses, like Sunday in Anaheim or Game 5 in St. Louis, very difficult. But tonight, or last night, and oftentimes after games, I think he can be insightful to what's going on with the Predators. So let's listen to Peter Laviolette after last night's win. It's goals for your team. Well, he scores a lot of goals. You know, not not just ones that get us back into the game, but he's, I mean, he scored goals in different ways at different times. So that's what he does. He's good at it, and uh, he had a terrific game tonight. Uh, Peter, I don't, I don't think they had lost with a lead going into the third in the in the playoffs this year. Uh, but the way you guys were playing in the fir- third and, and and kind of buzzing, did you feel something was uh, was going to come there? Yeah, I mean, the you you could. You could sense going into that third period between the second and the third, but going into the third, the guys were saying the right things. They were confident. I think they believed that they were playing a decent game, and uh, if we just stayed with it, that we would eventually get one to drop and then see where it goes from there. You mentioned that patient, Peter. How important is it to be able to keep patient and not get frustrated considering all the shots they were putting on Gibson? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's frustrating. You know, you, you think you're playing a good game, and it's so tight. The scores, uh, the scores at this time of the year generally are, are fairly low, and you wonder if one nothing is going to do it for the night. And so there was a lot of attempts. There was a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, their goaltender, I thought, played well and gave him a chance to, to hang in there and, and, and win a hockey game. But in the third, going out for the third, I think our guys stepped on the gas a little bit more and uh, continue to push in the offensive zone. John? Uh, Peter, I wonder if you could just talk about Pekka uh, bouncing back a little bit of a, a tough angle goal there on the first, but didn't seem to uh, didn't seem to phase him much as the game went on. No, I thought he played a great game. I mean, that's one of those tough ones. It's it's a hard angle. There's a lot of there's a lot of things I think that go through a a goaltender's mind when those hard angle shots come in, and there's people going to the net, and there's a backdoor presence and um, but, you know, his resp- I thought he played terrific prior to that, and his response from that I think was excellent. You, you knew he was going to have a good game tonight, and he did. Peter, I know we keep asking you this and we keep talking about it, but how much confidence is there right now in this building for your team, no matter, no matter the circumstance? Well, I think, I think there's confidence in our group. You know, we're, uh, I think the guys, believe, like I said, they believed going into the game that they could be successful, even though it's coming off of a loss, a hard-fought loss in Anaheim in Game 2. Um, I think there was a belief going into the third period that we could be successful as well. Being at home here, I think, is an advantage for us because of the environment and the atmosphere that the, the fans bring. So um, it was it was a good place to be and a good spot to be in. If you're, you know, if you need to score a goal and you need to have a big period, um, it's a good spot to do it in this building. Good. John, one more. Yeah, Peter, I wonder if you could talk about Cody's situation there after the uh, after the hit levels Harry there in the, in the second, I guess it was. Is that the right thing for him to do there, even though it ends up being a power play for them? Do you, do you like the fact that he's, he's coming in and, and sticking up for his guy in that, in that situation there? Cody, you know, he, he walks a line where he has to do his job, and he does it unbelievable there wouldn't be one guy in the room that would want anything different and we'll we need to figure out how to win a hockey game if something like that happens he's been a warrior for our team since he got here and um you know what what he did was our our guys appreciate his toughness and his response um you know in the end we ended up winning a hockey game so it's we're not talking about it but I can tell you that um, it's nice to have Cody in the lineup. He brings a he brings an energy. He brings an element of toughness, and um, you know he I think he does an excellent job at what he does. Peter Lavalette after the game last night, Predators storming back with a pair of goals 
in the third period to win two to one and take a two one series lead. Roman Yossi, the game winner, 243 to go on the power play. That was huge for this team. Philip Forsberg, second time in the postseason that he's at the tying goal. Remember back game three of the Blackhawks series. The Predators were down two to nothing going into the third period. Blackhawks giving them their best effort, trying to get back in that series and stay alive. And Philip Forsberg gets a pair of goals in that third period to force overtime, which the Preds eventually won in OT. Just a, a, a similar setup in, in that the first two periods didn't go particularly well. The Preds had not scored yet, and Forsberg wills something into the net in just a crazy environment. And once the first one came, both against the Hawks, which only made it 2-1 there, and then last night against the Ducks, that was the tying goal. It just felt like once that first one went in, that more were going to come. That the Preds were on their way back in this one and they were going to win it. That's just the feeling in the building. And I get it that that's the feeling that the Preds just have right now. And that they are confident, especially at home, that once things get going in the right direction, it's going to keep going. It's going to snowball and they're going to take care of business. But Forsberg's led the charge with that in a big big way this postseason after struggling a year ago. I mean, some people wondered at 21, you know, when he bust out to tie the franchise record for 33 goals in a season, he goes into the playoffs last year and really kind of struggled against the physicality of Anaheim and against the physicality of San Jose. I think that fueled him throughout the offseason. I think it fueled him this year. And he, he had some stretches in the season this year where he wasn't at his best, but still ends up with 30-plus goals again for a second straight year. And now in the playoffs, he's been one of the Predators' best players. That top line of Forsberg, Johansson centering, and Arvidsson on the other wing has been as good as any top line in the playoffs. Johansson's got 13 points. That ties the Predators' postseason franchise record. Arvidsson just everywhere. And Forsberg now leads the team with six goals, including one each in the first three games of this series. He's been absolutely magnificent. Another guy that's been terrific, James Neal. Scored the overtime winner in game one. Scored again in game two. Had a couple good shots last night. He's got five goals in the playoffs, all of them coming in the last eight games. He's been really good as well. We caught up with him last night after the game. James, you guys get a couple waved off there, but uh, you guys were able to keep your composure, keep from getting frustrated. How much of a factor was that? Yeah, it was. Uh, I just felt like we were, you know, we were getting to our game, and um, you know, we we're coming in waves, and we were pushing there. Um, and you could feel it. You know, the energy was in, in the building, and we we're getting good looks, and. Uh, you knew we knew uh, one was going to come. Another tough physical game against these guys. Is this what we can expect the rest of the way? Yeah, I think that's what everyone expected coming into it. First, uh, first game kind of set the tone the first period, and um, you now everyone was excited to get going again tonight. So. Uh, felt like we played well. Lots of reasons for your guys to get slowed down. A couple of goalie interference, a hard game, you know, no score for two periods, and you just kept coming and kept coming. You look like a team that wouldn't <laughs> be tonight. Yeah, I think, uh, like I said, we just uh, felt like we were uh, coming in waves there and we were getting to our game, and um, you could see that they were getting a little tired, so we were pushing on them, pushing on them, and um, we knew we were gonna uh, we were gonna find one, so it was a, a big goal on the power play there by Yos. James Neal, been a star for the Predators in the postseason. Part of the comeback win last night for the Preds as well. Another guy's been great, Ryan Ellis, contributing on a D line where the Preds have gotten either a goal or assist from those D linemen on 23 of their last 26 goals. Nobody else in the league, let alone in the playoffs at this point, has a decor that is that good. Ellis, Yossi, Subban, Ekholm, those guys are as good of a top four on the blue line as you will find anywhere on this planet. Third line's been pretty decent as well with Yannick Weber and Matter when only a couple hiccups 
in the postseason. But those top four have been absolutely incredible defensively in front of Pecorine. D don't forget about the job they've done to allow him to be as good as he's been throughout the postseason. And they're chipping in on the offensive end. Ellis with four goals himself in this postseason. He had the shot from point blank range in the slot that Gibson was able to deflect away but right to Philip Forsberg for the rebound goal that tied it last night. Another assist for Ryan Ellis. He is a guy that continues to get better and better and better. First round draft pick came in with a lot of expectations. It took him a little while. He's a bit undersized to be on the blue line in the NHL. Took him a little while to, I think, get up to the physicality and maybe get up to the speed and the responsibility of being an NHL defenseman. But over the last few years, he's been really solid. And this year, he's elevated his game to yet another level. And I think he's maybe even taken up another notch in the playoffs for the Predators. Here's Ryan Ellis after the game last night. Uh, a lot of the reasons for you guys to get stalled tonight. Uh, did score from the experience and the train never stopped. Man. You guys just yeah, I think that's the, the thing that we... Uh, we were happy about is how fast we were playing the game, the speed of the game, and um, we felt like it was only a matter of time until we got a bounce or two, and um, some great efforts by a lot of guys in here, and um, that would have, it's probably one of our most complete games in the playoffs. Two goal interference in eight seconds. Ever seen that one? No, I mean, uh, it's just the, the willingness for the guys to get to the paint and um, work as hard as they can to drive the net, and uh, it's going to happen here. You're not going to get the, the call and the bounce every single time, but um, the guys were confident. The guys were uh, remained on the hunt, and, and that's what uh, resulted in the, the win. What's to say about the character of this team that you guys were able to keep your composure when things weren't going your way? You had the goal interferences and the goals went off. The yeah, that's exactly it. We got uh, a lot of character guys in here. Um, everyone brings something into this room, and um, to, to stay even keel on the bench after both those, I mean, they're tough calls. They're, they're hard calls to make, but um, to, to remain and to have that resolve to, to come back and, and keep playing is um, is great. It's, it's a good feeling here. You guys get that late power play. I mean, how confident were you guys at that point in the game you guys were going to put in? Yeah, uh, the power play, I thought we were shooting it. We were getting a lot of looks all night long, and um, give them credit. Their, their PK was battling hard, um, doing everything they could, but uh, we were... Uh, unfortunate bounce uh, right onto Yost's tape, and uh, he put that one away, and it's, uh, it was a great feeling for the team. Ryan Ellis after the game last night. He's another one of the stars in the postseason for this Predators team. So much leadership in that room, and of course that goes right back to the guy with the C on his sweater, Mike Fisher, continuing to lead this team now further than it's ever been in the playoffs before. We gotta just control your emotions the right way, and just uh, just keep going. And um, you know, we've been in that situation before, and you just uh, just, just gotta keep 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 skating, keep working, and uh, you know, just eventually, over time, believing it's you're gonna find a way. And that's that's what we did. Did you count a level of vulnerability at all? You've won ten consecutive playoff games since last season. Well, we've been playing solid. I mean, you look at our crowd, the way they picked us up in the third there, and just kept going. I don't think they left. Uh, they're on their feet the whole time, and um, I guess you know it's a confidence at home and winning different types of games, and um, just believing that you're going to find a way at home. So.